Hi, welcome back to this two-part tutorial on creating crowds in Unity using their NavMesh system. So far we've created a simple crowd with a bit of a mesh and four different types of agents that travel across that mesh. Now we're going to add in a dynamic obstacle and this obstacle is going to interrupt the nav mesh, have the nav mesh recalculate its paths and have the agents change directions. So this is where this little cube that I've had in here comes into play. So I'm just turn this on so you can see it now. Created a cube, just a standard Unity cube, and I've put it in this location here. Let me go to the scene view where I can get a better look. There it is. So this uh, cube has become basically a doorway and we're going to lift it up and down. Now, to have it interrupt or influence the nav mesh, you need to make it a nav mesh object. So after you've created your cube, add component and add a nav mesh obstacle. That obstacle has a center and a side. It defaults to the shape of box, but you can set it to a capsule if you like. In this case, it's obviously going to be a box and it will fit neatly over the box that I have created here. Now, if we at this point go back to our navigation and bake, nothing will happen. First of all, this door hasn't been made into the static navigation that we set for everything else and you don't set it for this okay so the obstacle is different it doesn't become a static what it does have to do though is in the nav mesh obstacle there's this setting called carve and you want this door to carve out the nav mesh the reason why you might not carve is if you have a first person player that you want to be running around in here and you want it to bump into your agents or you want your agents to avoid it or if you had a car moving through or, or anything that's going to be moving a lot then you wouldn't want it to carve it can still be an object in fact let me just show you what you get at this point if I just press play the agents are still going to take the path through here. Now, some of them are just going through there because of the brute force of them, but some of them you will find to start to get stuck up against that door as it is an obstacle to them. And they're actually at the point now that they're squeezing through that gap there. So they are avoiding it as an obstacle on the nav mesh, but it isn't stopping them uh, from going in that direction. So it hasn't made the nav mesh recalculate their path and that's why we click on this carve box here now when we go to the nav mesh window if we have a look over here at that door box you can see that it has now carved out the path here and if I go back to that cube in the inspector and untick, oh, not that one, carve, go back to our navigation, you'll see that the path now goes straight through and ignores that door. So with the door, we want it to carve and affect the path, but it's also going to be dynamic. So when that door is not there, if I can move this up, you'll see the path comes back. And this is what's going to happen at runtime when we do this as well. Okay, so let's put the door back where it's going to be. And let's write some code to open and close the door. So I've got a C sharp script called door opener. And in that script, I've got this. So first of all, I've got a bool, which will remember whether the door is open or closed. It's starting at open is false and then the start function is not being used I'm actually get rid of that the update is saying if the space bar is pressed down then it's going to open and close the door if the door is open we're going to translate the door downwards by minus three otherwise we translate it by three in the up direction so it's just opening and closing it by three up and down. And then at that point, we also switch the status of open to not open. And that will switch 
this open bool from true to false and then from false to true back and forward like that. Very simple bit of code. So once you've got that, save it, go back to Unity and drag and drop it onto your door that you've made and that will open it and close it for you. Right, so now you're ready to try it out again. So let's press play. You'll see that initially the door is closed, so the agents will go that way. But if you press space and open the door, they'll go that way. And then they'll recalculate. You can open the door. And you'll see how that dynamic obstacle works. And it's very nice. Nice feature. And nav meshes are very powerful. You can do all sorts of things with them. But this is just one example and a very simple example at that. When you add animated people to a crowd simulation, it really brings it alive. Here's one example from my Udemy course on NPC programming using pretty much the same things I've just shown you. And this is just the surface of what you can do with nav meshes and crowd dynamics. For example, here's a fleeing simulation that I created starting with the project that I've shown you. Remember, if you want to learn more, then please sign up for my courses or support me on Patreon where you'll get free access to my Udemy courses. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel.